Hey, and welcome to the G-Spot. Last night, Season 3 of Better Call Saul premiered, and it was a fantastic episode. I really enjoyed the episode uh, overall. They started up some new interesting storylines and tied into the previous storylines quite well. These color-drained scenes, they look black and white, but they're not really black and white. They're actually color-drained. Uh, give us a lot of information. And last night's was a real shocker. For a moment, I thought that Gene died. But I don't think so. I think he just passed out. We see Gene take his lunch from the Cinnabon. And while he is on lunch, he witnesses a robbery. What Gene has to decide in this scene is whether or not he turns the criminal in or not. And Gene decides to turn the criminal in. Such an unlikely move for Saul. And this is why we see Gene pass out. I did think he died, but it's it's not a die. There's no there's no type of I thought it was a heart attack, but there's no <gasps> from him when he when he falls. He just falls over. So I definitely think it's a faint more than a death. But it kind of represents a death. When Gene turned that criminal in, he was saying goodbye to a part of himself, a part of himself that he really uh, loves, a part of himself that we see him fighting for in this series, Better Call Saul. The part of him that feels the need to defend criminals. Gene said goodbye to that part of himself when he turned that criminal in. And it was a lot for Gene to take. It was the basis of his identity with Saul. And he he just kind of threw that away. Now, I if, if you've watched some of my previous videos, uh, you've heard me say, we are going to see Gene die in one of these season openings. It's, it's what these season openings are all about. The main series is about watching Jimmy turn into Saul Goodman. So it's essentially the birth of Saul Goodman. Uh, these these color-drained scenes that we get in the season openers are uh, about the death of apparently Saul and Gene. We, I, we might have saw the death of Saul Goodman last night. Uh, that may be what Gene's, pa what Gene's passing out was representative of that with turning that criminal in he basically said goodbye to gene uh, he basically said goodbye to saul so but still what we have left for these season openers is we're going to see gene actually die because that's what gene's doing in cinnabon he he's essentially just going through a long uh, death process and so from this beginning it's we can presume that this season jimmy is going to be questioning uh why he is not trying to help the criminal element even more because that is truly what he is driven to do. I loved everything that we saw with Mike and this is where we're going to see Better Call Saul really amp itself up this season is through Mike. We know that Gus Fring is going to be added to the cast this season but he, I don't think we're going to see Gus uh, meet Jimmy. There's not going to be contact between uh, Jimmy and Gus. Gus is going to come in Mike's life. Gus is watching Mike right now. I don't think Gus is trying to hurt Mike. I don't think he has plans on hurting Mike. I think Gus sees Mike as an asset and he is vetting him right now and getting ready to approach him with an opportunity. The best part about Mike last night was we saw how determined, how clever, how uh, just, you know, Mike's a, a brilliant, competent guy. He, he really is. And we saw all this last night in his determination to find the tracking device on his car. And then he reverse engineered the tracking device so that he could track the people tracking him. What Mike did was he had his contact get him a duplicate tracking device. And then Mike took the tracking device that was on his car, he hooked up his radio to it so that his radio would drain the battery, so that whoever planted the device would know the battery was drained and come and replace it. And when they came and replaced it, what Mike did is he put his own bug in the gas tank. So, in the gas cap. So they thought that they took the bug that was tracing Mike away, but what they really did was take a new bug away that was allowing Mike to trace them. By the end of the episode, Mike has the upper hand on who's tracing him. I can't wait to see Mike meet Gus Fring. I do believe we're going to see it in the second episode. I hope we're going to see it in the second episode. I thought we would see Nacho in this first episode of season one, but we didn't. I actually thought that's who Mike was going to meet when he was in the parking lot at night and met his connection that got him the tracking device. So Mike is going to be very busy this season making new friends with Gus Fring. Jimmy is going to be very busy, as we know from the beginning, 
realizing that he really wants to protect criminals. And we're going to see this play out from a storyline that's already open. The storyline that Chuck caught Jimmy falsifying documents to help Kim. And Jimmy really thought he accomplished something when he did this, but this is all going to come crashing down on Jimmy. For one, Kim is not at all comfortable with what happened. And it's likely that Jimmy's move is actually going to end up destroying Kim's opportunity with this big account. We saw Kim meet with them and present what she, the work that she had done, and they were very impressed with her. But when Kim walked away, she was very uncomfortable with knowing that Jimmy made Chuck look like a fool in court. And even though this benefited Kim and got her the account, and even though she had nothing to do with it, she is really having a hard time dealing with this. And she's not going to be able to accept it. She is going to break, and I don't know if she's just going to walk away from the account or what she's going to do, but uh, this is definitely going to affect Kim. And it's affecting how she relates with Jimmy. Uh, as soon as Jimmy was giving her a back rub in the office, and she was very receptive of it, until Jimmy brought up the topic. And Kim immediately uh, got cold and walked away from Jimmy. Jimmy's going to have to deal with this with Kim uh, along with what he's dealing with Chuck. And Chuck is trying to find a way that he could use the tape against Jimmy. He talked about this uh, earlier in the episode and mentioned that the tape really isn't very useful. But he played it for his assistant there. And I think in allowing his assistant to hear it, he's in some way making this tape useful. He told the assistant not to repeat it, but he knows the assistant is going to. So we, we get to see Chuck's plan. We're going to have to wait to see Chuck's plan play out. But that's not Jimmy's only conflict with Chuck. There's actually a deeper conflict going on with Jimmy and Chuck, which is that Jimmy just wants Chuck to look at him and think highly of him. But Chuck is never going to. And again, this is going to feed into Jimmy deciding that what he really wants to do is protect criminals. He's going to get to the point where he realizes he's never going to get Chuck's respect, so he might as well do what he wants to make himself happy. Definitely expect to see Gus Fring in the second episode next week, and definitely expect things to get a lot worse for both Jimmy and Kim. They are both going to pay the penalty for what Jimmy did, and the pressure on Jimmy is going to continue to get greater as these episodes go along.